Hey everyone, welcome to an intermediate Roblox scripting tutorial. For this one, I will be teaching you how to make a, a saving obby checkpoint system with data store. So the only thing you need to set up beforehand is you need to make a folder, call it whatever you like, I'm personally going for checkpoints, and then add whatever checkpoints you want to the folder and make sure they're all named different things. So let's get to the actual scripting. We're gonna go ahead and add a script to the server script service the first thing we're going to do is zoom in so you guys can see better. And the second thing we're going to do is say local data store service equals game get service data store service. The next thing we are going to do is say local data store equals data store service get data store. You can call this whatever you like or if you already have a data store in your game, just use that and add something to your player's data. Uh, we're going to call this data store checkpoint. And then we're going to have, and that, that's it. Next, what we're going to want to do is get, uh, so actually we're gonna organize this. We're gonna have also local players service equals game get service players. And now we have all the services we should be needing. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I am actually going to have to do though is save this to Roblox so that I can uh, use data store service. So we're gonna call it tutorial obby. We're just gonna not change any of these settings. No team create, so I don't have to worry about saving and editing my scripts. And there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna go to home, game settings, perm I think it's security actually, security, and we're going to enable studio access to API services so that studio can use data store. The next thing we're going to do is add is connect so we're gonna say player service dot player added connect function player so whenever a player is added we're just getting that player so now what we're gonna want to do is say if data store get async player dot user id oh then and now we actually so there is a what I'm personally comfortable with for storing data in the game is using something called underscore g dot. But I've been, I know that that's inefficient and I don't want to make a tutorial that is, won't be efficient. So there are two ways we can go about this. We're gonna go about the simpler, but a little bit more confusing way. If that's too problematic, let me know in the comments and I'll make a second tutorial with the easier way. But what we're going to do is say, local player data equals, and then a table. So we, what we're going to want to do here is say player data player dot user ID equals data store get async player dot user ID. And then if there isn't uh, player data, we're going to want to say player data player dot user ID equals table and in this table we're just going to want to have uh stage equals one or actually stage equals we're going to use a string checkpoint one there we go so that's the checkpoint they will start at now we're going to want to say players service dot player removing connect function player so we're just doing the same thing again Player data, well, and then we're going to want to save the async or set the async in the data store uh, of the player's user ID to the player data's index for their user ID. Or the player data's, not index, that's the wrong word, table. <laughs> there we go. So now when the player leaves, it should save their data. And just to be safe, we'll go ahead and get rid of their data in the player data uh, table after we are finished. There we go. So I'm gonna explain what we're doing here now. Obviously you can understand why we're getting services, but what we're doing here is all of the player's data will be stored in this table. And so if they have data, what we're doing here, get async, if they have data, if it's, okay, so in Lua, only nil and false will return false. So if they don't have data, if it becomes nil, it will just go to this function where we're defining their data. 
If they do have data though, it'll set it to whatever the data store service is getting. So, and the reason we're using the user ID instead of the username is because people can change their usernames on Roblox. So, now we're gonna get to the actual checkpoints. So what we're gonna want to do is also come back up here and say local checkpoint equals workspace dot checkpoints get children. Now we're gonna want to come back, yeah, we're going to want to come down here and say for name value in pairs uh, checkpoints do. So what we're doing is we're looping through all the checkpoints and we're getting their name and value. What we're going to want to do is say if, no, is we're gonna wanna say v or value dot touched, which is a function of parts. If you wanna use models, I can add a little addendum at the end of the video for that, which I will do. Connect, and then we're gonna connect a function. We want the thing that was hit. So we'll just say hit, or the thing that touched it per se. Not, it doesn't have to be a collision. <laughs> what we're going to want to do is say, if players, players service, get player from character, hit dot parent, then local player equals player service, get player from character, hit dot parent. And then we're going to want to say player data, player dot user ID dot, and then uh, dot stage equals value dot, or it equals name. So, what we're doing here is we're getting the player via get player from character with the hits parent because if if we have a character here I'll load a character for an example as you can see the parts are not like in the workspace they're in a model so the parent would be the character uh, so what we're going to want to do now is make it so that the stage actually does something so we'll make a new little function up here. Local set stage equals function player. So what we're going to want to do is say, or actually, no, we're gonna say local spawn, local set stage position. Sure, that's pretty accurate of what we're doing. We're going to say uh, player, hmm, hold on. So we're actually gonna do a little rewriting just to make this simpler. We're gonna, instead of having it be the children of checkpoints or checkpoints variable, it's just going to be checkpoints, the folder. And then we're going to, in our table that, or our loop down here, we're going to just add get children. Uh, so what we're going to do up here actually is say, if checkpoints find first child player data, player dot user ID, dot uh, stage then player dot character set primary prim <laughs> primary part C frame and then we're going to want to do the checkpoints uh, find first child hmm, this is going to be confusing to read so we're actually going to make this easier um, so we're gonna say local uh, player checkpoint equals checkpoints. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna say local che player checkpoint equals, and then we're just gonna yoink this whole thing. <laughs> um, and then we are going to say if player checkpoint, then player set primary part C frame, player checkpoint dot C frame plus C frame dot new vector three dot new zero player dot character where we're being very like future proof with this dot humanoid dot hip height zero there we go so now whenever we call this function we should be teleported to uh the checkpoint now all we need to do is say that when the player is added we are going to Okay, so I've actually ended up making a few changes off camera. What you're gonna wanna do is instead of having the cframe.new, just have the vector three uh, with the hip height instead of the C making a cframe. And then what we actually need to change is instead of setting it to the name 
We're actually going to change this to an underscore because we're not going to be using it. And we're going to have this be the value.name, which is the actual name of the part string, not the name in this checkpoints get children table. Now, we should have working checkpoints when we use the set stage position. What we're going to want to do is the second the player is added, we're going to want to say set stage position player. And then once the player's character is loaded, we're using this, or the character is added, we're using this because when they die, we want them to spawn at their checkpoint. Um, we're also going to want to set their stage position. And now, if it's, if I'm correct, by the way, if you ran the game with, uh, with the uh, old version of this code, the easy fix is to just change your data store number to two or use data store editor to edit it, which I would recommend. If you don't know what data store editor is, look it up, super useful, it's like 100 Robux, 100% worth it. Anyway, so now when we spawn into the game, oh, we do not spawn at our checkpoint. Okay, so what we're actually gonna want to do is... Okay, so we're actually gonna do a little more cleanup. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is actually just say player.character wait for child humanoid. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here. This is uh, wrong, not sure what I was thinking. We're gonna get rid of this function bit and we're just gonna add set stage position instead. So now, hopefully, we should have an operational script. Apologies, I keep making mistakes. Just leave it as it was before. Uh, that should be operational now. Okay, so this isn't actually working. And for a reason I couldn't tell you why, in the official Roblox documentation for characters being added, it says that you don't have to do any extra steps to get the character when the player is first added. But for some reason, it's just not loading for me. If if this is an issue for you, just add a wait one second. If it isn't, great. So that should finally be a working version of the checkpoint system. It only took me like three iterations. There we go. Now I have teleported over to this checkpoint. If I reset my character. Oh, what? Okay, we need to make one last change to the script. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here. I'm gonna say local run service. Yes, sir, sir is. Local run service equals game, get service, run service. We're gonna come down here and instead of waiting one second, you're going to say run service dot render step wait. So we're gonna wait one frame. And then we're gonna come down here and say run service dot render step wait. So we'll give the game a frame to handle things. And now, hopefully, it should be working. Not entirely sure. Sorry, it's a, we're not using a render step because that's uh, the frame. We're using heartbeat. That is for the physics calculations on the server. So hopefully should be working. Okay, still no, we're just going to use the run surface for the character being added and keep the wait one in the original function. This is really infuriating, just the way this, is, this works. But there we go, we now spawn at our checkpoint, and hopefully if I reset, I should also spawn at the checkpoint. There we go, we now spawn at the checkpoint. If I come over here and I touch this checkpoint, and then I reset my character or whatever, I'll spawn at this checkpoint, and if I close out of the game, and reload it up, I spawn at my checkpoint. All you have to do if you want to add more checkpoints is make a new part in the checkpoints folder and rename it to something else. I could add another checkpoint here, and all I have to do is just rename it something else. It doesn't even matter what it's called. I could be like, I could, could be that, and it would work. So there you go, that's going to be it for this video. If you want to see uh, more Obby tutorials, let me know, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.